And after that, oxen being so slow, you weren't able to go back more than, say, a quarter of a mile to a half a mile with oxen because it was so slow. Then horses replaced them on the skid roads. And the horses were, well, both uh, horses uh, in a good, good country that wasn't too rocky and too rough. Uh, they could go back quite a long way, up to a mile on a skid road, pulling a long string of logs. But then the steam age came in, and uh, gradually the uh, railways were built, and they became more and more efficient. The uh, logs were taken out by steam donkeys, yarding them and loading them, and, and steam logging railways bringing them down to the water. There were probably 15 or more logging companies with railroads just in this district, if I remember right, and they worked very efficiently until after the turn of the century, and then you began, we began to get into a gasoline age. Well, of course, the original automobiles and gas engines were laughed at, but uh, trucks were built, and World War I brought along the development of the truck to uh, the point where it could handle much heavier loads and so trucks were used for logging in certain places on, on uh, shorter hauls. The big problem with trucks to begin with is where uh, the tires wouldn't stand the hard work, and not only that, your brakes were not sufficient when you came down hills. But as time went on, uh, tires became much uh, bigger and better, and truck engines became more and more powerful. And you got air brakes, and... Uh, you were able to uh, hold a truck back coming down a steep hill. And so by the time we uh, got to the end of World War I, uh, trucks had developed to such a point that it was cheaper now to log with a truck than it was with a railway. So almost overnight the uh, trucks came in and uh, they just took over. And by 1950 there was hardly a logging uh, railway left. BC Forestry officially began with the Forest Act of 1912. The BC Forest Service was formed, and the order was given, count the trees. It took 25 years on foot and on horseback, on boats, trains, and biplanes, but the foresters came up with an inventory. While they were counting the trees, other foresters were already thinking about how to renew the forest. I was a the view of the Sloan Commission in 1945 was that the first growth forest was a gift and that hard work was needed to produce the next growth. This presented a huge challenge. Producing a new forest in a province where rainfall can vary from 8 centimeters a year to 500 centimeters a year, where topography, temperature, and tree species can be so different. Faced with renewing the forest, the industry changed its view of tree species it had favored its world-famous Douglas fir, the light, strong Sitka spruce used widely for aircraft, and the appealing western red cedar. Hemlock, balsam, and pine were considered weeds. Now they began to be harvested and sold. In the Caribou and the Kootenays, the industry developed differently. Hundreds of bush mills sprang up along rail lines, particularly through the Caribou. Then in the 1960s, the industry found ways to turn mill waste into profitable pulp. Three pulp mills went up in Prince George alone, and the interior forest industry was on its way. In 1965 and 66, 360 small mills around Prince George were bought out by larger companies. For the first time in the interior, the logs came to the mill instead of the other way around. With the 1970s came rapid changes in technology. Computer-aided sound milling, pulp processing, research and planning. The inventory branch, which had started its work on horseback in 1912, was now working with computer-generated maps. Foresters used to watch for smoke from lonely towers. Today, a province-wide system detects every lightning strike in fire season. In 1976, the Pierce Commission recommended an integrated approach to forest management manage the forest for all its products and uses. Now we are in the age of the managed forest. 
In 1987, the ministry's target is 200 million seedlings planted, advances in genetics, in tree breeding, in tree growing, in harvesting, in sharing the forest. All are being put to work to preserve and improve BC's prime resource.